and we are going to start off here with um, tracing over uh, a person, um, you know, an image of a, of a human face. So what we want to do is the first thing is I'm going to go to window workspace and I'm going to set it to tracing. All right, because that's what we're doing. So we're tracing and um, I can go ahead and get rid of my swatches over here. And one of the first things I'm going to do after I place my image, you'll see that this image is in on layer one. So um, now I already have some tracing. I'm just not turning it on to show you. So if we look at um, layer one, if I double click it, uh, I can make this a template layer. And what that's going to do is that's going to dim images. However, I already went into this image and like lightened it up a lot uh, before I placed it in. So if I dim the images to like 50% or whatever, it's going to be really hard to see. So that's why oddly it says dim images to 100%. Remember that dimming the image enables you to make that image lighter um, so that it's easier to trace, easier to look over. So, and yes, this is in Illustrator. So I'm going to say, okay. And I'll show you <clears throat> what I've already traced in on this image. I just put like a frame around it to hold it in. So I'm going to turn off the visibility of the layer uh, with the photograph. And so um, this is kind of like the, the direction that we want to go in. Okay, we want to, we want to trace it in. I also added like a different layer of some shading and things like that. But let's go ahead and I'm going to make a new layer above layer one. That's where, where my tracing is going to be. <clears throat> now, the key is what we're looking for is we're trying to create a really slick, like vector looking graphic. You could grab your paintbrush, right? And, you know, you could sketchy, you know, make this face or whatever, but that's not what we're looking for. Um, what we're looking for is we want to make something that is kind of um, more or less like clip art that is, that is really clean. And just like with the Volkswagen that we traced is made up of as few or the least amount of points possible. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my pen tool and underneath my pen tool, uh, I wanna make sure that, or rather while I'm with my pen tool, I want to make sure that I go ahead and get rid of the fill here. Um, so if I, if I don't get rid of the fill, if I go to try to trace this shape, it's going to have a, a white fill on there. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and right at the beginning, I'm going to grab my pen tool and I'm going to select this little no sign, the little slash while I have the fill selected and it's going to have no fill. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And I apologize, it is a kind of a little low res, but we'll just work with it. Um, and I'm gonna start tracing. Now, even if you have a mouse, if you don't have a tablet, Illustrator actually makes tracing easier than in Photoshop because you can, um, you, you, you don't have to worry about like clicking and holding a mouse and dragging it all down. I clicked to start it, but now like my, I'm using a pen, but you know, it's just floating around. So when I go to click down, I'm going to go ahead and click here and click and drag a little bit and make that first part like where her eyebrow would be. And I'm going to click and drag. And then I'm going to come down on her cheek and click and drag and click and drag, click and drag, click. I didn't drag on that one. And then I'm going to click and drag a little bit. She actually has a little bit of a cleft in her chin, but I'm going to leave that out for now. Now, if you guys can follow along and you can see this point that I'm putting in, this is pretty far, right? So if I click and drag, I can describe the jawline a lot better. And then I can come up here and click and drag. And then remember, once I'm done with that, if I go to edit, or I'm sorry, select, deselect, I can stop. So let's turn off the visibility and we see what we've got. Now, it's important to know that whenever you're drawing somebody, whether you're drawing it by hand or whether you're tracing it, the more lines that you add on a face, the more you age that face. 
in the real world, we call those wrinkles, right? But in drawing, just the more lines you have, the older somebody's going to look. So anyways, there's her face. And let's go ahead and build this eyeball right here. And by the way, here's another thing before I go to the eyeball, something that people mistakenly do. So if I were to draw her nose, I would probably want to maybe do something where I use as few lines as possible, maybe something like that. And hopefully you guys will have a slightly darker image to work with. That's a little hard, easier to see for you. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing this is, oh, escape. What you don't want to do is you don't want to do this. Right? You don't want to build the nose like that. You don't ever want to show both sides of the nose with, with a really strong line because she's going to look like a goon, right? It's just going to be hanging out there. And that's why here I've got just one side of her nose done. So let's get rid of that. So let's take a look at this eyeball over here. Let's kind of draw this. And I know it's kind of low res, but we're just going to have to play with it. So I'm going to draw using my pen tool. I'm going to trace out her eye. Whoops. So I'm just edit undo. And you know, I might want to lower the stroke on this. And maybe I'm going to go back in a little bit. And maybe I'm going to draw um, another layer to thicken up under her eye. Like to do like the lashy kind of eyeliner kind of thing. So we're getting somewhere with that. So now I want to draw the the um, iris and the pupil and all that. So I'm going to grab my circle tool for this or my ellipse tool, click and hold, get the ellipse. And remember that when you have this tool, you can just click and drag and make a shape. Or if you hold down the shift key, you get a perfect circle when you draw. So I'm going to come here and figure her eyes should be something like that. And then I'm going to figure that her pupil should be something like that. Now, technically, we know, you know, your picture might not be right um, dead on, but we know that the, uh, the pupil is in the center of the iris, right? So I can select both of those things. And right up here at the top, I can use my uh, align tools to center those two things together. Okay. Now, obviously I know that this iris, I'm sorry, the pupil should be solid. So I'm gonna do that. But of course, that's gonna look pretty insane if we just do it like that. So generally speaking, you see that there's gonna be like a little bit of a shadow area right here because you've got your eyebrow, but then you've got like your eyelid area and then you've got the, the folds over your eyes. So generally there's going to be a shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this circle and I'm, and I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it right here at the, um, at the eye. So I'm going to go to my eraser tool and grab my scissors tool and cut and cut. And then I can grab my direct selection tool or my selection tool and delete that come back and then I'm going to draw a shape right over it. I'm going to draw a little shadow shape. Now you'll see it's going outside the eye because it has a stroke on it. So now I've got a little shadow shape there and if I turn the visibility off there we can see what's happening. All right so that's starting to look like 
a pretty believable eye. Now, if I'm going to put my details in, I'm probably going to need to deal with this tear duct over here. Right? Now that has a fill and no stroke. I'm just going to flip it around and I'm going to make the stroke small, maybe even smaller than that. And, you know, if I wanted to, I could draw like another little shape in here just to kind of get that in. And then maybe I draw another shape up here. And it'd be so easy to do even with a mouse. All right. Oh, that's great. That's great. You see, I don't know if you guys noticed that. Um, what happened is I accidentally, when I went to draw this second shape, I didn't even notice. I accidentally grabbed onto the end of this line right here. So I'm going to undo it all the way back. So watch what happened. I meant to draw a separate shape right here, but instead I accidentally joined it to this open line. So what I really should have done is started a little further away and then drawn this shape. I'm gonna click and drag. And then again, you notice that I keep turning off that tracing layer so that I can make sure I'm right. Now I can see that the end of this line kind of goes a little past there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my scissors tool and I'm gonna cut one more chunk off this line and delete that. So that's all pretty straightforward. You can kind of see, and then in this case, in my other example, I just drew her eyelashes as like a dark area shape. Also, you see that highlight? So I would probably come back in here and draw a circle and put a little highlight there in her eye. And that gives it just a little more like life, you know, having that highlight in there. Now, the last thing that I want to show you before I turn you guys loose on trying to trace your own person is, and this is really important, you must not do what I'm about to show you. So when you're going to do the hair, and that's why I chose this example. So this hair is like flipping, flapping back, right? What you should not do is, and I'll just do it with the pen tool so it's faster. Um, you should not kind of do this with, with her hair. You shouldn't like have her head go like this and then have her hair like be like that, okay? That's not gonna look real. That's not gonna look convincing. That's not gonna work for anybody. So instead of like drawing this shape for the hairline and, and really like, so you don't want to do kind of like that where you have like the shape and then the hair is pulled back from there. What you want to do is I'm going to come back and turn this on is I'm going to come back here and I'm going to draw like some individual strands. And you don't have to draw each and every strand because you're suggesting it, right? And the human eye can fill in the rest. Like we get it. We understand that she doesn't have 11 hairs. We understand that you are suggesting. Oops. So something like that. Now that looks crazy because it's all like one thing, I'll probably go back and 
make some of these thinner, lighter, and all that kind of stuff. But ideally, what you should wind up with is something that looks kind of like this. 